Subscribe to Motoroids for the most in-depth and detailed car and bike reviews. Hit that bell icon and you will be notified before everyone else. Hey guys, welcome to motorrides.com. My name is Amit Changani and today I am going to talk about helmet safety certifications. Something which is very important from a safety perspective and unfortunately there is not much awareness about the subject. So in today's episode of Tech Talk with Motoroids, I am going to talk about the certifications in the world which are very very popular. And I am going to also talk about the certification which is prevalent in India and is known as ISI. What are the differences between all these certifications and why you should care? And is one of these certifications better than the other? what all testing procedures and methodologies do they undergo before being given that certification and how does all of that matter. To start off with the understanding of the testing procedure, first we need to understand what a helmet is made of. So to understand the construction of a helmet, the main part of a helmet is its exterior shell which is generally made of an ABS material. It's also made of more expensive uh, materials sometimes like carbon fiber or some other expensive materials but mostly it's made of an ABS polymer. Inside you have a comfort liner which is meant to absorb sweat and give you comfort and if you open it there is an EPS liner which is essentially hard thermocol and it helps absorb the impact in case there is a crash and protects your head from damage. In addition there is this retention system which keeps the helmet firmly over your head and prevents it from flying off in case there is an accident and makes sure that your head is protected at all times. Then finally you have the visor which protects you from the wind and the water and all of these things together when put together very well make a very good helmet. Now the quality and the way these things are put together can be different and how well they protect your head can be different. So there are various different certifications across the world which make sure that each helmet is tested and it adheres to certain norms to make sure that your head is provided safety to a certain extent. Talking about these certifications, there are many such certifications and you have DOT for the United States of America, you have ECE for the European market, you have CRASH for the Australian market and you have SHARP for the UK, there are many more. And you also have some not-for-profit uh, certifications like SNELL which not only help give certifications to helmets, test their sturdiness, test their safety but also help manufacturers make their helmets better. Then we also have our own Indian certification which is called ISI but since uh, not all these helmet certifications uh, are very popular across the world we are going to talk about three main certifications which is DOT, ECE and SNELL and we are also going to include the ISI certification since uh, this is uh, a video which is being made in the Indian context. So let's get going with this one. Now the one thing that we need to know in general about helmet testing before we get into the specifics of every helmet certification is that such tests are not conducted on just one helmet. For every model that's being tested there are multiple helmets which are conditioned for various different uh, conditions like cold conditions, hot conditions, helmets are tested for sub-zero temperatures, they are tested for 52 degrees celsius and more, they are also tested for wet conditions and they are also tested for uh, conditions where there is a lot of UV radiations. So every helmet before being given a certification is conditioned for various different conditions. So every helmet model is tested in various conditions to make sure that it's safe in all the different conditions. Now the first certification that we are going to talk about today is the DOT certification and this one is administrated by the United States government and the National Highway Transport Safety uh, Administration which is their road safety highway uh, transport body and every rider who is riding a two-wheeler in the United States has to have a helmet with DOT certification. If he's not riding a helmet which is DOT certified then it's illegal. So the helmet has to go through a variety of tests to make sure that you know it's safe and uh, the first thing that the helmet has to obviously go through is the fact that the shell of the helmet should be sturdy enough. So there are a variety of tests and the first test that the helmet has to go through is a crash test. Now for every test there is a head form or a dummy head which is put inside the helmet and the tests are undertaken after that head form has been inserted and once the test has been conducted if the head form gets an impact and if the helmet is not able to protect the head form in a pre-specified manner then the helmet fails the test. Now the technicalities of these tests are very very technical so I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible and I'm going to talk about the most important tests which are uh, undertaken over each helmet. So the first test that a DOT certified helmet has to undergo is a crash test and the helmet is made to crash over a surface underneath from a height of 1.83 meters and the force that is applied during the crash test is an equivalent of 400 g and it is made to fall on a flat as well as a spherical anvil and when the helmet crashes the head form inside should not be injured or should not be damaged and that's 
a very important criteria. Now, DOT tries to simulate a condition where in a crash scenario, the rider went through multiple impacts. So they crash test every helmet on every anvil twice. So there are two strikes and uh, that's uh, a salient feature of the DOT test. In addition to that, the helmet also has to undergo a penetration test where a pointed object is made to fall on the helmet and it should not pierce through the shell and the EPS liner and if it does, then the helmet fails the test. So the EPS liner should be able to stop that pointed object which is also known as a striker from entering the helmet and hitting the head form or in effect injuring the rider. Now in addition to all of that, the retention system is also tested for its strength. Now, understand this one very simple thing. If the helmet is very well built and if the retention system which keeps the helmet around your head is not very well made, then the helmet is going to fly off and that's not going to be of any help at all. So, they apply pressure on these straps and make sure that this strap would be able to hold itself and would keep the helmet on your head even if there is extreme stress on it. So what they do is they apply pressure to the tune of about 22.7 kg on the retention system in DOT and this pressure is applied for about 30 seconds to start off and it goes all the way to about 136 kg and that load is applied for about 2 minutes and in that way they test the retention system for its sturdiness to make sure that the helmet will not fly off your head. Now in addition to all of those tests which are about the crash or the impact, there is also a very important safety parameter which is the visibility. So every helmet which is tested for DOT has to have a visibility of 105 degree angle from the center so that there is no obstruction and the rider can see very clearly without any obstruction to his peripheral vision and that's very important and every helmet has to pass that test as well. Now, while the DOT is considered quite comprehensive, there is a bit of a controversy about it and some people don't trust DOT too well because it works on an honor system wherein every helmet manufacturer in the USA can put a DOT sticker and start selling his helmet in the market and he doesn't necessarily need to get it certified from the authorities before putting it out in the market. Now, while that may not sound very effective, how it works is that the NHTSA and the officials from the DOT what they do is they go out and pick up samples of various different helmets from the market and if that helmet doesn't pass the test and if it fails, the penalties are so high they amount to up to $5,000 per unit sold of that specific model in the market that no manufacturer dares to sell a helmet without having it properly tested. So DOT is fairly reliable for the simple fact that the industry, the helmet industry in the USA is very old and they understand the values associated with it and they don't generally do something which is very wrong. And the penalties which are associated with violating a DOT norm are very high. So generally the helmets which are certified with DOT are considered safe. And uh, while a lot of people are skeptical about it, it generally is considered a very safe certification. The next certification that we are going to talk about is the ECE certification and this has been taken from the United Nations Economic Commission from Europe and United Nations has been taken out and Economic Commission for Europe is the expanded form of ECE and 22.05 is the latest iteration of this certification and this norm is adopted by over 50 countries uh, worldwide and this helmet is actually considered safe and is recognized by almost all the motorsport bodies in the world including uh, AMA, FIM and every other motorsport body that you can think of. So in that sense, the ECE certification is considered the gold standard of helmet certification as far as the government recognized helmet certifications go. So from a reputation perspective, ECE is considered very, very solid and there are some reasons for it and I'm going to talk about that as well. But let's uh, first understand what are the differences in terms of the testing methodology. So the tests are more or less the same. However, the ECE testing is a bit more rigorous in some areas. First and foremost, the crash test uh, in DOT where it happened twice on each anvil, there is only one strike in ECE. So that's one area where DOT has a slight advantage. However, the retention system test on the ECE helmets is more stringent. Uh, they apply more load and the load goes all the way up to 300 kgs, which is pretty high. So that's one area of differentiation. Apart from that, ECE also tests its helmets for abrasion over the surface. So if you're sliding along with the helmet after a crash, it provides you additional uh, protection. And also the retention system is tested for abrasion so that it doesn't wear off or doesn't get cut if it's sliding against the road for 
uh, a pre-specified amount of time or distance. So those are the few differences between uh, the DOT and ECE helmets. However, the more important difference here is that unlike the DOT which works on an honor system, the ECE system does not work on honor system. If you have to get a helmet certified through ECE, you have to submit 50 helmets of that specific model and then the officials from ECE and your officials are going to sit in a neutral third party lab and all the tests will be conducted on the helmet and only when the helmet is tested and it passes all the tests will it go to sale in the market otherwise it will fail the test and it will not go to the market at all. So that's one big difference because what happens is the helmets which may be faulty under the DOT system actually pose a bit of a threat to people uh, who may be wearing them and if the helmets are faulty then unless that fault is found out the people who are wearing that helmet and have paid a lot of money for that helmet for that certification are actually not properly protected. So that's the main difference and that's probably the reason why the ECE has a bit more recognition worldwide as compared to DOT. Now the third helmet certification that I was talking about was Snell and Snell is actually a not-for-profit organization which was founded uh, in America when a racer named Pete Snell died in a car accident and he was wearing a helmet but still uh, that helmet could not protect his head. So they learned a lot from it and they founded the Snell Memorial Foundation which worked towards making better helmets and it helps helmet manufacturers improve their helmets as well. They don't just test but they improve the helmets as well and the tests that they conduct are considered very very rigorous. In fact the tests that Snell conducts are supposed to be much 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 more rigorous than uh, the DOT and the ECE tests and Snell helmets generally are considered safer as compared to DOT and ECE helmets. Although there are personal opinions and there's a lot of debate about which certifications safer and bikers across the world keep arguing about it. However, in general, Snell helmets are considered a bit more safe and the tests also differ. For example, the Snell helmets are tested on five different anvils, not just two. Also, the heights from which the helmets fall are higher, they are different. And in addition, the chin area of the helmet, unlike DOT and EC, is also tested for a crash and impact and the visor of the helmet is also tested for its ability to resist debris and in fact Snell tests its helmets uh, with an air gun. Three pallets are fired on three different parts of the helmet and if any of the pallets manage to pass through the visor then the helmet fails the test. So in general the Snell testing is way more rigorous although the helmets which are made to Snell standards are also more expensive and you have to pay a lot more money. In terms of quality, it's generally believed that DOT and ECE helmets, since most of the helmet manufacturers generally cater to both the markets, if a DOT helmet is exchanged with an ECE, both the helmets are going to pass the respective tests. So the quality is considered more or less the same, but in terms of recognition, ECE is recognized a little bit more. Which brings us to ISI, which is the Indian standard. And the ISI standard, in fact, has been taken from the ECE standard. So the testing methodology and a lot of other safety criteria is similar to ECE. However, the difference here is compliance. As with a lot of other rules in India, as with a lot of other regulation in India, ISI is also not adhered to very, very well. And you'd see a lot of helmets. In fact, 90% of the helmets selling on the street which have ISI mark on them, which have never been tested for their crash worthiness and that's the big problem. In fact, there was an RTI application which was filed by one of our fellow uh, journalists at Overdrive magazine and the results suggested that only five helmets were tested in the year 2017, 2018 and which is nothing. If you really see the number of helmets that are being sold in this country, we sell millions and millions of helmets every year and only five helmets being tested over one full year just lets you know how well the regulation is complied to and how well the authorities are actually looking at the safety of the helmets. So that very fact makes the ISI mark on a helmet not very trustworthy and that's why at this point in time it's not very very advisable for you to trust ISI mark all by itself and buying a DOT or an ECE or a Crash or a Snell or a Sharp helmet is a bit more advisable. For those of you who do not understand English, English for those people, I have made this video in Hindi since this is a very important topic. So you can click on the link above and see this entire video in Hindi as well. So those were the nitty-gritties of what all these safety standards about helmets are. And I really hope that this video was of some use to you. If you found it useful, do hit the like button, share this video with your friends, spread the awareness, let everyone know 
what is the difference and why helmet safety is so important. Subscribe to our channel. And until next time then, this is Amit Changani signing off. Rev hard, rev free and ride safe.